to be honest, I was never, I never considered science as a career. It was how the, my journey came about leaving Vietnam. So as a kid, I only liked science um, as a subject. But then my inspiration was actually to go overseas to study one, one day. And that was m more like the inspiration to start with. And then when I went overseas to study, I realized that science could be a career. So then that's how I pursue science in university and also then pursue a PhD following that. So it was not really, yeah, it wasn't a straight line in the beginning, yeah. I'm Kelly Nguyen. I'm a group leader in the Structural Studies Division at the OMB. I did my undergrad in Australia um, at the National University and then I moved to the OMB as a student and then went to the US for a postdoc. Now I just came back here as a group leader. My research focuses on a region of the chromosome called telomeres, which has strong implication in cancer and aging. I actually did chemistry at, at university. I didn't do biology, but at the end of my undergrad, I had to decide what to do for my honors research. And I did a summer research in structural biology and various other projects in chemistry. And I realized that even though that wasn't what I studied, but that what I liked doing most in the lab. And then I also went to a talk by um, a person called Tom Stice, a very famous Nobel laureate. And that was before he earned the Nobel Prize. And the talk was so amazing that really made me feel like this is what I want to do for the future. And that's how I changed um, to molecular biology. The coolest thing about what I do is being able to see things that nobody has ever seen before. So that's the nice thing about doing structure work, that if you were the first one to solve the structure, then you'd be the first one to, to have seen it. So that's probably, yeah, the thing that I find coolest, yeah. There are various people who have, who have big influences, influences on me over time. Um, the first people are my parents who really put a focus on education because I came from a small town in rural Vietnam, so we were always told education is a way for you, you know, to move on from here. And then, then after, during school, like in Vietnam and also in New Zealand, I had a lot of good teachers who really supported me on the way and really encouraged me to pursue science. And then at university again, and at, during my PhD, I had very good mentors. I have had good people who, you know, let me work in the lab and support me personally and scientifically. And then again, for my postdoc, um, I have my mentors for my postdoc who are also really supportive. So these people really have big influences on me and my career. My OMB hero is probably kind of biased. Um, it would be Max Perus. And the reason being, that's also the hero of my PhD supervisor. And he talked about Max a lot like a daily life and, um, and how he pursues science and how um, there's a phrase that Max Peru say that I always take every time I do research, you know, I think about my work. Uh, in science, the truth always wins and that sit in the Max Peru's theater. Uh, I, I don't think it's here also, I think. And then I look at it and I always kind of think that this is how I should pursue science. I should find the truth. They are uh, a few things that are special about working at the OMB. The first being scientifically is a very inspiring environment, I have to say. Um, there are so many like-minded people and very motivated people coming from all over the world to come here and really seek the truth in science. And that's something that is really rare. And I find that this really pushed me to, to work harder and to think about things more broadly taking more challenging projects that I wouldn't have thought about. And that is the first thing. And the second thing is about the people who work here. And I think that it's, it's very unique because we have 30% of our people are staff and these staff really make this place running. And I am really fortunate to be back and, you know, coming to work and seeing all these people who really trying the, their best to do whatever they do. That is something that I think is very special about this place and I really appreciate that, yeah. To make a good scientist, besides the experimental skills, 
there's another thing that I think is very important is to be resilient and to stay positive. And for me, the way that you know I think about it, I take pleasure in my daily successes, say running a nice gel or making a good grid. I take pleasure in those so that it keep me going in the long run. The worst experiment I've done was during my PhD where I um, had crystals, they're very beautiful crystals, but they didn't diffract very well, but there was some diffraction. And then what I did was taking everyone, everyone's advice on how to improve those. And I took one of the advices and tried it in many ways for 100 crystals, brought all of them to the synchrotron just before Christmas, and I came back with no diffraction. So that was one of the things that the times what I felt like couldn't be worse, you know. But then what I learned from it is that, you know, things could be worse. So I just have to kind of keep going and try more things. If I could do anything again, I would study more biology at university. And that's something that I feel like I had a lot to catch up when I started on my PhD. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm slowly catching up. If I could choose a scientist to interview, I would choose Joan Stice at Yale and I would ask her about if she, if there's one advice she has for young people who just started out in their career, what would it be? If I have many hobbies outside of studying, I'm still keeping some, so I'm, I love baking. I do baking a lot and I love drawing, so that's Arts was one of my other alternatives as a career option, being an architect. Um, and um, I love reading biographies also. My scientific career has been very different from what I imagined. I grew up like studying maths, a lot of maths. And then I had a very good chemistry teacher in New Zealand and that got me into chemistry and that's what I did in my undergrad. But then, as I said, towards the end of my undergrad, I actually liked structural biology more in terms of research. So I moved into structural biology for my PhD and then I've been staying in that field since. So it's been, you can see, very different. There are two key advices that I think that I would like to pass on. One is um, to, as I said, to stay positive, to take little successes, you know, as your, you know, daily kind of happiness. And then that, because in research, often you spend so much time and then successes only come once in a while. So you really have to take these pleasure into these little daily successes. And the second is to choose your mentor as well. And for me, that has been a big difference for my career. I wouldn't, I don't think that I wouldn't be here without these mentors who supported me who really believed in me and even though after I left the lab or left the classes, they still continue to support me and that is the thing that made all the difference, at least for me. What I think would be the next breakthrough in science, the next 10, 15 years would be like mapping the brain, at least not human but some other animals, that would be really a big step forward.